<laughs> not too bad, but not exactly very good. I, I can't draw, just so, just so we're all clear on that. I don't draw, I just scooter, that's all I do. So right now, a lot of us are like going crazy. If we can't go outside and ride as often as we usually do, it's usually just not a good situation. So I have a few things here that I wanna show you guys that will be five different things to help you get through quarantine. Now some areas are on more of a lockdown than others. Some people have to stay completely inside. Some people just have to stay at home, which includes like the garage or the driveway. As long as you're not, um, as long as you're practicing social distancing, it's safe. So don't go and like hug up all kinds of your friends or anything like that. That's kind of what the situation is right now until we are on full, full lockdown, which hopefully doesn't happen. Me personally, I've never seen anything like this. I've never lived through anything that's been quite like this quarantine in my lifetime. So it's been odd just trying to get through everything and practice social distancing with my friends as opposed to going to the skate park every single day and giving everybody knuckles. But one thing that helps a lot with that, gloves are a big thing. So if you guys ride with gloves, cool. Uh, make sure you guys are washing these every so often just because they do get really nasty and dirty and whatnot when you're hanging on with your grips because they touch the floor and all kinds of other things like that so these are actually helping me a lot when it comes to that also the prism gloves show up tomorrow so for all of you guys that place an order for gloves for the pre-order we ran into an issue when it came to the entire uh, pandemic we couldn't get our gloves in here because they're being held in customs so it was, a, it was a big huge mission but they show up tomorrow thank God so all glove orders will go out tomorrow and they all come with a free signed poster, which, hey, let me tell you something. Signing all those posters took a while, so I hope you enjoy those. <laughs> but let's move on with this video and start out with activity number one. Activity number one just has to do with a sheet of grip tape. This is Vital Grip Tape, the one that I'm using. It is the green kind of heart vitals one. If you guys wanna grab some Vital Grip Tape, you can get one at any one of your local Vital dealers or you can get them online. Some people might know this one, um, but some of you might not and it might be kind of cool for some of you guys that are stuck at home and can't ride your scooters at all. Just something that will make it kind of flavorful, I guess, for when you actually do go back out at the skate park. So a lot of you guys have probably seen these before. Like I said, this is a paint pen. Essentially what this is is a marker that disperses paint as opposed to just normal ink. I have like a lot of these, but I don't know what happened to my entire package. So I'm just gonna use this silver one, which will look pretty good on this vital grip tape. If you guys have never used a paint pen before, uh, you have to like kind of dab it in order to make it like kind of uh, wet I guess make sure that the paint is going through the actual tip of the marker there you go once that's done you can pretty much just start going like you can draw whatever designs you want cool thing about these pens is like they don't wear out super quick as if you were to like use a sharpie or something like that all of us have used sharpies on grip tape at some point or on just some other kind of random stuff to where it just died really fast. Paint pens come in all kinds of different colors, so you can get blues, greens, white, red. I wouldn't say they're exactly cheap. You can find some at, uh, at Michael's is what I believe you can find them cheapest. You can buy singles for like maybe a dollar, um, but I bought these ones at Walmart and I think they're like seven bucks for five of them if I'm not mistaken. So they're not that expensive, uh, but the good thing about them is they do last a lot longer than, I, like I said, a Sharpie or um, just other kind of specific colored ink tools, I guess, utensils. But yeah, you can draw like little scoots. You can draw like your favorite company's logo. Oh God, this is gonna be embarrassing. Eh. <laughs> not too bad, but not exactly very good. I, I can't draw, just so, just so we're all clear on that. I don't draw, I just scooter, that's all I do. But that's activity number one for you guys. Like I said, paint pens, uh, you can probably get them for like two bucks at Walmart or something like that for single ones. Good thing to keep you busy. Activity number two. So this one actually falls more into the category for people that can actually go outside and just play like in their front yard and whatnot. Not the people that are full on lockdown. Those kinds of people are uh, pretty much screwed when it comes to this specific hack. Well, halfway, halfway. And this one has to do with uh, wax. Am I holding it upside down? Sure am, wax. Everybody has waxed their curb outside of their house, right? Everybody has done it. This is called curb candy. This wax is pretty good. 
Plus it smells good. The cool thing about wax is you don't have to go out to a skate shop and buy like a specific type of wax in order to make it work. Cause sometimes this stuff does get a little bit more expensive than you would hope for when it comes to just literally it being a small block of wax. Like this thing right here, it's probably like two bucks, $3. And when I look at this and I think of it, it's just, it just wax. So if you're on a budget and you don't wanna go out and spend five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, on a block of wax, you can just go to your local Dollar Tree 99 cent store and buy a candle. And this is, as you can see, just a candle is a lot more. Although it doesn't smell as good, some people will argue that it doesn't work as good. And that may be true in some cases, like this might not slide as good as this does, but this will definitely get the job done for you guys when it comes to waxing your curb outside. You can make your own wax if you wanna melt it. If you're planning on doing that, make sure you have a parent around to actually help you out with that. Don't go out, buy a torch, or just go start playing with fire and start melting wax without knowing what you're doing. So get your parents around. There's plenty of videos online that will show you guys how to make your own wax at home. And like I said, usually they're gonna start you off with a candle, maybe throw some butter in there, things like that. That's what I've heard people do and it helps it to slide a little bit better because it is slippery. It's something you can do if, if you're riding by yourself. There doesn't have to be all kinds of people around. You can have your parents there just to watch you to make sure you're safe. So yeah, waxing a curb, things like that, that helps, that, that, that'll definitely kill some time for you. But activity number three. All right, so the next one is pretty obvious. A lot of you have probably already done this in your houses, but some of you may have not, and I know that I haven't yet. The next thing is for you to actually work on your scooter. And if you've never done this, this is the time for you to actually learn how to do it. There's plenty of videos online that will show you how to fix your wheels if they keep on coming loose, or how to tighten your compression, or how to take grips off if you don't have a compressor, how to work bar ends, how to install grip tape. There's so many different videos online. So if you guys want to learn how to work on your scooter, like I said, right now, it's the time for you guys to actually do that. My scooter in particular does not sound good right now. Listen. Hang on. There we go. That's what, that's what it sounded like earlier in one drop. I guess I just had it was good. And I know that this is because my wheels are a little bit loose right now. So I'm gonna tighten my front one up really quick. I only have one Allen on me right now. I just need a little tiny bit. It's still a little bit loose right now, but I'm not gonna worry about it so much. Back one, there we go. And I'm gonna tighten up just some of the other small things that I can tighten up with just one Allen. Uh, me personally, I can tighten my entire scooter pretty much with just this three-way tool. Um, this will take my bar ends, this will tighten my bar ends, it'll tighten my brake, and it'll tighten my clamp. It'll take my bars off and I can tighten my compression. This is the only tool that I need in order to fix my entire scooter. I might need one more Allen when it comes to some of the bolts seizing up a little bit and being more difficult to actually get off. But all in all, this is pretty much it. Your brake, you don't have to tighten like crazy. It just has to be like relatively snug and it'll stay in there because it's only hot. It's only holding on one little piece of plastic, you guys. Your bars are a different story. If you need to tighten your bars up, I would definitely recommend cranking on this thing, but make sure you do it in like an even form. So what I mean when I say that is don't tighten up your top bolt 100% and then go to your bottom and tighten it up 100%. That's not how you do this. You tighten it up like a quarter of a turn at a time so that that clamp will close evenly. Here we go, just a little bit more. Boom. So now when it is okay, it's safe to go outside. We don't have to practice social distancing anymore. I can go outside and I know for a fact that my scooter is gonna be just fine for this session. Also, if you guys ride outside right now, this is another good thing to practice when you're inside because that means that every single time you guys go outside, you know this thing's gonna be ready to go and you might learn something that you didn't know how to do before. So while you're riding, you'll be able to fix something that falls apart. That's activity number three. Number four. The next thing is for people that are able to go outside. So for those of you guys that, that are indoors only and you can't go outside whatsoever, you could do this in your garage if it's big enough or maybe in your backyard if your parents will allow it. So the 
next activity for you guys, if you're able to go outside again, is to either make or buy a kicker. This one in particular, I think is about 150 bucks if I'm not mistaken, but I could be mistaken, just so we're all clear. But this is the closest thing to a skate park that I can get to when I'm riding outside of my house. Now, I don't have like a backyard or anything. I live in a condo complex right now, but that will soon change. This kicker is plenty to help to make me have a good time right outside in this little alley area right here. I can do all kinds of stuff on this thing. I can flip this. I can do all kinds of 360s, mini tail up tricks, bar spin tricks, things like that. And if you guys don't have one of these, or if you're not able to go out and just buy one, you can make one and you can make one for like 20, maybe 30 bucks if you really want to budget it super hard. It's not going to be as big, but it'll definitely be just as fun. And again, there's plenty of videos online that you guys can go and watch that will show you how to make kickers step by step. And I'll actually put a link for one below. Maybe that'll help you guys to get your quick fix outside of your house as opposed to going to the skate park. But being that I can ride outside, let's get a couple clips on the kicker. It's fun, but it's it's a little scary sometimes, but it works. All right, we got like, I don't know, maybe 15 tricks or so on that thing. But now let's talk about the final activity. So the final thing that you guys can do while in quarantine, with this one will only take about like, like literally half of this little square right here. I can do it within, I can do this activity in like a four by two area. You don't need much room whatsoever. You can do it in your room. You could probably even do it in your bathroom if you wanted to, but I would recommend doing this in a spot that at least has carpet just in case you do drop your scooter. You don't want to damage any wood floors or any tile or anything like that because it will definitely crack some tile. This is essentially a little trick tip for you guys. If you guys do not know how to do bar spins or you're, you're currently learning them or you're just trying to figure out how to do the hand motions correctly, this is something that you can do at home, especially right now while in quarantine, that will help you to get that motion down to where when you come back, you're able to do bar spins every single try. So what you're gonna do for this is you're gonna take your scooter just like this and you're gonna kind of uh, swing it back and forth. Again, I've made a video about this before, but it's just a little reminder for you guys. And while you're swinging it, once it gets to its apex, which is right there, right when it gets to that highest point of that swing, that's when you gotta throw the bar spin. Now, if you do not have this down and you throw the bar, it'll come back and it'll nail you in the shin. So if you if you don't do this part right, you're gonna you're gonna feel the consequences. This is a full-on commitment kind of thing, and it definitely takes some practice for you guys. You can also start out with your legs like extremely wide, so it's a, a little less room for error. Oh wait, a little more room for error. Less room, more. You won't hit your shin as easy, okay? As you get better at it and you get a little bit more confident with it, you can do the bar spins and kind of bring your legs a little bit closer and you can even start to swing the scooter higher. Like there's a lot, of, well, I just hit the back of my leg and try to make it come straight back. Oh man, it's freaking nerve wracking. One thing that helps a lot with this is making sure you do the bar spin all the way. Sometimes you'll think you do it all the way and that's usually why it starts to get like all ski wompy. So like if I only do it a little bit, it's gonna come like, start doing all this kind of stuff. So. Try to do it completely straight, a full bar spin, just like this. And by the time you come back from quarantine, once you're back out at the skate park, you'll have your bar spins down almost every single try. Of course, that's not a guarantee or anything, but it's definitely something that helped me when I was younger. It's This is a trick tip that I saw on, I think it was MySpace at the time. Almost every single kid that I've taught how to bar spin, I, I teach them this method. It'll almost force you to do it properly because like I said earlier, otherwise you're gonna get a, a quite a, a shinner. You're gonna get a shinner. This virus is a huge pandemic and it's a definite threat for people that are older or extremely young. Um, well, it's really a threat for everybody, but more so those two specific groups. So if you guys know people that are um, an older age or a, an extremely young age, just make sure you're very careful around them. Make sure you guys are washing your hands. Uh, just practice all your cleanliness and things like that. Just, just because we all wanna be safe right now. And also, like I've said previously in other videos, make sure you guys help other people. Make sure you guys are helping other people where you can and where it is safe. But before we tune out from today's video, 
we gotta give you guys a positive message of the day. When I make these messages, I, I try to keep them all as absolutely positive as I can. And I try to keep all of the messages very important and special and things that I have dealt with in my own life. But the thing that I wanna talk about today, it, it is positive, but it can go into a another realm. A lot of people um, out in the world, and we've all experienced these people before, they live off of tearing people down. They don't want to, to build anyone up. All they want to do is hurt people, attack them, and see sorrow. I have seen this so many different times at skate parks. I've seen it in restaurants with people that are arguing with their waitress or something, or tearing them down for something that they're doing, or I've seen it at school a lot of times when I was in high school. School, I saw it constantly and I for one um, have learned that stepping in in those kinds of situations is so so helpful to that person that is being attacked what I was referring to in the beginning of this message is it, it is a positive thing for that person and, and you might be helping somebody that is in so much need and you don't even realize it and neither does the person that's actually attacking them sometimes this kind of situation can get physical the attacker might be upset that you're stepping in and 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 he'll go towards you now and and he'll have a lot more animosity towards you because you're tearing something away from him or her and just stuff like that and it really sucks. I'm not condoning fighting, that's not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm condoning that you guys step in and help somebody no matter what the cost. No matter how awkward the situation may be, no matter what it might turn into, because at the end of the day, you might be changing somebody's outlook on life or so many different situations. I know when I was a kid, I was bullied a lot at uh, skate parks, at schools, things like that. And I wished, I just w loved if somebody would have just stepped in and helped. Um, it would have changed so many things that might have cured some, uh, cured some wounds that I have today. Um, but people, people just don't. A lot of people just want to avoid the awkwardness. They want to avoid the confrontation. Um, and eventually I had a couple people that did step in and helped me and, and I'll remember that for the rest of my life. And because they did that, I always pay it forward in the same situation and you guys should too. But that's today's message. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, I'm out of here. Later.